This is the morning office for March 21st. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 105, verses 4 to 11. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham his servant, O children of Jacob his chosen, he is the Lord our God, his judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. When Abram was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. The Word of the Lord. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. One of the writers on silence says that silence is the privilege of courageous persons. My thought for today is really more of a question to those who are my listeners. What sort of courage do you think this is? Is it the courage to look at oneself? Or is it the courage to be thought weak or stupid in our silence? Or is it perhaps the courage to be in proximity to God? Certainly we've talked already in the course of Lent about the fact that silence brings us face to face with ourselves. We have no further distractions. We are confronted by our own imperfections. That certainly requires some courage. It's very easy to to flee from those parts of ourselves that we don't like. And obviously, we often speak simply for the purpose of making sure that others don't think we have nothing to say or that we think nothing, we're unable to think anything. And so it is a courageous act to remain silent and be thought stupid, even if perhaps we are not. 
But I do think that the deepest and holiest kind of courage is that which allows us to imagine coming close to God, God the uncreated creator, God who is the source and power of all things. That sort of courage certainly is the the most difficult for us, I think, because to come face to face with our own creator is to acknowledge the source of everything that we are, everything that we have. What more could we ask for, and yet how much do we shrink from it? I ask your prayers for the day, the world, and for the church. Pray for all the needs that will come today to you, to those you care for, those who are far away. Pray for the needs of those among us who have no one to pray for them. Pray also for the world, those places where natural disaster and human created disaster has driven people from home and safety, where for any reason people live without the peace and comfort that God desires for all of humanity. And pray for the church, that it will have the grace and strength to help meet the needs of the world. O God, you have called us to be your children and have promised that those who suffer with Christ will be heirs with him of your glory. Arm us with such trust in him that we may ask no rest from his demands and have no fear in his service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.